uh, my Twitch stream. I haven't streamed in a long time. So I'm happy to finally get back into it. The uh, main reason is because I'm currently not traveling uh, due to the whole uh, situation. Um, better to stay at home. Um, so, uh, which also leaves me with really good internet, um, at least uh, decent enough for doing some Twitch. Uh, as you can see already here on my screen, uh, this is kind of what we are building. So I had this idea to use uh, something called Flutter, which we'll get to in a second, to build a game. And I already have a version um, that I built and I used a framework. And the goal of today will be to re-implement what this game does at this point and uh, not use any frameworks. So we basically want to just do everything with uh, just a Flutter tool itself <clears throat> and uh, using Canvas directly. Um, so also, if you're watching this uh, later, um, I will keep posting uh, certain links, but I will also show them in um, you know in the in, on the screen share, so you can always go to the URLs, uh, so you're not missing out on anything uh, that was in the chat. In case you're watching this later, maybe on YouTube or something. So here's a game. Um, we have a UFO. Some of you may notice that this UFO was slightly modified from an asset that is used um, or was used in an old uh, tutorial for Unity. Um, I'm not a graphic person, so basically all my assets I had to get from somewhere, and I got them from, um, you know, from asset stores um, or, or kind of uh, 2D art places where you could get them for free. Um, uh, most of them have a CC0 license, which means you can freely use them in your games. So here we have our player. Um, the player can be uh, rotated with uh, on the phone as well. Obviously, we can also rotate with the um, the keys, uh, WASD. You can accelerate. We just collected a point there from a diamond. Uh, so we got some score. And you can also shoot. And uh, if you bounce against the wall, uh, have uh, read the heart we get hurt and then we can collect the med pack like I just did to get um, to uh, you know get healthy again so the the control is not basically just left and right and moving the player how we want it actually behaves kind of like a real spaceship you have to point into the direction where you want to accelerate to and then you give yourself acceleration so it's a little hard to control intuitively but um, it uh, I wanted to make it realistic so that's the game that we are trying to build. And uh, now let's uh, do a little uh, homework here and first catch up on what what we're actually using. So first of all, we are using Flutter. And so Flutter is a uh, toolkit that was created by Google. It actually wasn't created by Google. They were bought eventually by Google, but it's now Google. And uh, it is supposed to, originally it was supposed to just be able to uh, allow you to write apps for Android and iOS. Uh, so basically you write the code base once and it works on, on, on all these platforms. Uh, recently they added as well uh, support for OS X and they added support for web. So uh, the other reason why I don't want to use the framework I'm using right now is that it includes a audio player plugin, which unfortunately does not work on the web. So my goal is to stay um, compatible with all these versions. And if we can pull that off, I could actually post the app as we're developing it online so uh, people could play it uh, while we're still developing it. So uh, the framework that I'm talking about that I used, uh, which I highly recommend, by the way, it's a nice framework. Uh, it's called Flame. Um, and it allows you to quickly get up and going with uh, building like uh, 2D games. Um, and it's really useful. It has a, basically a game loop. It includes um, a bunch of things like sprite sheet uh, support, loading images, and so on. But I rec uh, recognize that um, in some cases it's not exactly fitting my purpose. I would maybe want to use parts of it, um, but some things, uh, the way they work, are not um, the way I want them. So basically um, it has a sense of components. The components also keep the state uh, and so on. I want uh, to basically pull the state out into models. Uh, and we need to do that because we then also need to communicate with the server uh, about the entire state of um, 
of our uh, game, right? Uh, to make it multiplayer. So um, that's pretty much uh, the background there. Um, by the way, if, uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to post it in the chat. I have this open here on the left. You can't see that, but I can. So if anyone posts a message, I will I will see it. Um, actually, maybe I have to actually pop it out again. I had like another one here that might be stale at this point. So, but now I have my chat over here. All right. So um, now, what we'll do is like first we'll go a little bit through. Um, uh, so, so there's one thing I wanted to mention with uh, with Flutter, uh, it has a very fast uh, feedback loop. So basically, uh, let me actually just move that over here, make it a little smaller, and then uh, pull this over here. Um, like I guess we close this for now. Um, so now we can see we have the player there, and now if I change anything in my game props, so for instance, I want to debug the um, I want to debug the hit points of our player and just change that to true, right? And then I just re reset and immediately now you can see we have the hit points here, right? Um, so these little dots there. Um, and it's a very fast feedback cycle. You don't have to recompile anything. Um, obviously, if you uh, save the state where the player is and then reapply that, your player will even be in the same uh, position where it was before. So that's another uh, nice little thing you can do. So I'm actually going to make the OBS window here a little smaller because it's getting a little bit too much. Uh, you can be happy that you cannot see all the stuff I got go, going on over here. Um, so now, um, so what we'll do first is I'll go a little bit through um, what I've implemented, like how this is implemented so far. So we understand how to uh, basically go there uh, and and use some of these um, to re-implement. Um, so this one, by the way, uh, is generated when you're trying to support web. And, and here's the problem why I can't use the other players because the other player doesn't have a web support yet. So we're actually going to remove that file. Um, that was when I was attempting to see if this would actually work as it is on the web. And it doesn't mainly because of that other player. That is part of Flame, of that uh, framework, right? The, the game framework we talked about. So um, now let's look a little bit what what we have. So basically, we have main. Um, and the main is basically the the method that Flutter will call to start your your game. Um, um, so this one is necessary to get something set up. I can't remember exactly what, but it, it was necessary. Otherwise, things don't work. And then basically, what we do here is, uh, if we are on the phone, we make sure that we are uh, setting the orientation. Um, we may want to actually do full screen to to true. And uh, but you know we're gonna throw this away anyways. Uh, apparently here I find another way to do that. Um, you can also do it like this. Uh, basically I, uh, here I remove everything but the bottom, um, but not important. The main thing that we're doing here we're using Flame to load all our assets, right? So we have the background, which is basically these tiles over here, um, and kind of things like Met Kit, right? That thing over here. So we basically reload, uh, preload them, uh, and then Flame will cache them. And then also we uh, load uh, the audio uh, part, like basically any sound files um, we want to have. Now, um, and I think I've removed that here because we're not using sound at the moment, but um, that's how you would do it. Now, then, then basically we're creating a game widget. Now, a game widget just basically wraps some setup here and creates a game. So the game we're going to look at uh, later on. Um, but basically, the main point here is uh, we create a tile map, and actually that code we will reuse. So I'm going to jump in there in a second and explain how that actually works because that uh, can be used in in our uh, reimplementation. But basically, what we're doing here, we're creating a, a material app. So if you're totally unfamiliar with uh, any of these things, like uh, f these are kind of flutterisms, uh, you can just like uh, you know do any beginner flutter tutorial, and immediately you will find out um, what these things are. Um, one thing, by the way, one thing I wanted to say, um, I will probably stop in about uh, now, like one hour, five minutes. So at the top of the next hour to keep this video, some sort of, uh, short, but I will just take a five minute break most likely, and then keep going. Um, I want to basically spend the entire afternoon today, uh, to, uh, go forward with this here. Um, so here we're just setting up some gesture detection, right? Um, 
and we don't have to go into all these details. We'll, we'll re-implement this uh, when we go from scratch. And then here we we'll just basically uh, implement these, uh, the HUD here, right? So basically we need, to, we need to stay informed of like the score of the player and the player's health. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then we basically get this game widget. So the widget comes from, uh, from uh, Flame. Basically Flame is gonna wrap our game um, uh, with, with something that has a game loop and everything. So basically our UFO game, um, it basically, um, I can't see that here, but it implements um, the, it extends game, which is from Flutter. So we're actually going, going to go ahead and try to see how that works in Flutter. Uh, and that part we definitely will need. And we will uh, basically uh, re-implement that in our, our own game engine. We'll basically write a custom game engine for ourselves, right? Uh, because we don't want to use Flame. Not because it's bad, it's just because, for, for multiple reasons. Uh, as I said already, uh, some things uh, don't really work very well. And another thing I wanted to build from scratch. Um, by the way, um, the um, inspiration for this, uh, some of you may know this, Handmade Hero. Uh, so this this guy uh, has an awesome uh, Twitch stream. And I think now multiple years of, of history of videos, which are all on YouTube, um, where he's basically building a game entirely from scratch. He's doing it in C++ really low level stuff and then uh, builds on top of that. Uh, I've been watching uh, some of those and they're awesome. So that kind of also was the inspiration for um, for what we're going to do. Um, okay, so now let's jump back to our code here. So uh, as I said, the time map, right? So the uh, get time map is basically we're building a time map from the level. Okay, so how does it work? So uh, here is a sample level. Um, you may remove these rulers. I, I thought they would be useful. They might not. Um, so a level basically consists of a multi-line string, which encodes uh, certain things. Um, so in order to understand this better, I'm going to move uh, this one over here again. And uh, and then I'm actually going to show uh, a level that we're using. Um, so here we have the, the walls. I call it the walls level. Um, and as you can see, we got the player over here, so that's the P, right? So it appears here. Then we got the plus, which is the med kit, and then we got a D for diamonds. So that's how we can quickly uh, create uh, all these levels, right? And then basically what we do is like the boundaries of the platform, we denote with these parentheses here. And then extra walls, we can either do like a vertical or a horizontal slash. And that's pretty much... Uh, a really quick way to build levels. So you could always use uh, you could also use uh, tiled, which is a um, a level editor. But this is actually for our purposes is actually much faster and works really well. So and then here we have all the levels, so we can load them in. And then basically, what, what does the tile map do? So the tile map basically uh, goes in and pulls in the the string. This is like the terrain I called it, and it splits it into lines, and then it basically uh, uh, removes these rulers, right? So we're removing the first and the and the last. And, and then we basically figure out, okay, what? how many rows do we have? And then the number of columns, we actually have to figure out like the maximum um, that we have. So if I, if I go back to the level, mm, uh, if you go to the wall level, um, right, so basically, from here to here, that's like the longest. So we basically have to figure out um, how many columns do we overall need. So even if this one stops right here, we still need to go all the way here uh, with the columns, right? Um, so that's what uh, figures that out, uh, the maximum. And then we basically know, okay, now we know how many tiles we need and uh, we create those tiles. And first of all, we say uh, all of them are out of bounds, right? That means, uh, so the out of bounds is basically this black thing here. Um, and then uh, we get basically just going through each row, and uh, and then for each row we go through each cell, like basically each column, right? And so first of all, we're looking for the bounce start, and then we look for the bounce end. So if we uh, go through here, we are looking for the car at the, um, basically this would be the cell, right? And then uh, we say, okay, is it basically a bounce start car, which, um, is uh, the parentheses like that, right? And if it is, then we know we have seen the bounce start. And the same for the bounce end. And so if we haven't seen the bounce start, or we have seen the bounce end, then 
or the car is basically empty, which means it's just uh, an empty string, then basically uh, we are going to declare this out of bounds, right? And uh, But otherwise, uh, if we see something else and we are in bounds, then we are going to derive um, the cartel uh, from the car. So basically we are saying that if we find a P, then we'll say there's a player. If we see any of these, we put a wall, otherwise we put a diamond and uh, or a medkit, right? So how that would, would uh, work basically if we look at our wall here, uh, of our wall level. So uh, we'd come in here, right? And let's just say in this row, we, we are not in bounds yet. We are not in bounds. We haven't seen the bounds start. Now we have seen the bounds start, right? So now instead of putting out of bounds, we're going to put um, like a wall there, right? Uh, sorry, a floor, right? So basically we need to know that this thing here is not out of bounds because we need to put a floor tile. This one is out of bounds, so it stays black, right? And then uh, we keep going, and then we find a wall, so we put a wall and so on, right? So and actually, um, we can run um, we can run this uh, tile map uh, dart, and we can see what it outputs. So I think this should still work. So yeah, so here we go. Um, I just ran this, so you can see that um, it basically uh, these are enums, right? So if you go back to our tile map, we can see that um, uh, the tile here, uh, those are um, as an enum, I, I marked the numbers here, so we can see that, okay, so zeros uh, would be out of bounds. Um, and to visualize this, we, we fill them with axes. Um, and then here's a bounce start, and we can see that a three is a wall, right? So we have these walls here. And two is the boundary, so that's a wall that also uh, is the end of the, uh, you know, the playable area. And then the four would be the player, and then the five would be diamond. And uh, so as you can see in the sample here that I'm using to test this code, uh, that's what that looks like. So we basically convert this to that. Not much there, but at least now we have um, codified our, um, uh, our our terrain, right? So so that's basically all that does. It just converts it into this matrix of um, of of kind of like uh, you know uh, numbers, matrix of numbers that tells us what is uh, at which spot in in our tile map. And um, one important thing to note is, it's not obvious, but we do it here. And we're probably going to go through this code when we, we built this. And that's probably the first thing we do. Um, but basically, um, somewhere in this code, and as I said, this is not obvious, we are actually making sure, ah, here we go. So this is where actually this comment should be. So the tile row, we're actually not, um, saying this is just a row, we're kind of reversing that. So we're taking the number of rows, so let's just say we had 10 rows, right? So that'd be 10. Then we're subtracting the row numbers. So let's just say our row would be, the first one would be zero, and then we subtract one. So that would mean we'd end up at nine, right? So basically we are reversing, um, we're reversing our tile map because the thing is like the string is from top to bottom, right? So line zero is at the top and line 10 would be at the bottom, but we want zero to be at the bottom. Like we want to have zero, zero in the bottom left corner, right? And and like we'll see in, in the canvas, that's a similar problem. The canvas are also normally starting uh, zero, zeros at the left, um, upper left, and the, uh, but we want to move it to the lower left, right? So here we're doing that, and then obviously when we are actually printing it, we actually have to go backwards, right? Because when we're printing a string, right, to the or an array, like basically this needs to be uh, what is. Um, so we need to remove that because that usually would be the zero, right? The zeros column we, we want to print as a zeros column, but in reality, if zero is here, then it's actually the, let's say, the tenth column or something, right? So we when we print this out. We're actually going backwards, um, going backwards there, and then print out. And so that's, and so instead of just copying this code over, um, let's just rewrite it um, piece by piece. Um, so here, here we have sample terrain. Um, we rewrite it to piece by piece, and that will be the first thing we do, right? So um, therefore, I will move this off screen right now. Um, move it over here, and I'll use it for myself as a reference. Um, and we can close this game, so we'll stop the game. We are starting fresh. 
So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to GitHub and we'll just create a new uh, repository. And let's just say we'll call it, um, so it was kind of a battle UFO, right? The, the idea is that you'll have two or more UFO uh, flying around, basically players fighting each other. Um, so I had this idea. If anyone has an idea for a name, please paste it. Um, battle UFO, but, but I also had another one. Uh, UFO, no, that's... Let's call it bad to foe for now, okay? Working title. Uh, so we have bad to foe, um, and we'll just say uh, uh, UFO multiplayer player uh, game uh, using flutter, okay? So if it's not liking this, so we'll just do that. Okay, so it's gonna be public. Uh, we don't need to read me. Um, we will, well, she might need to read me. So let's do that. So uh, we create this. Um, all right, so now uh, we can go to our terminal. And uh, so you can see I did multiple tries right on this. So uh, UFO 2D was the worker type for this so we'll just create um, this here all right so now we have batufo okay so there's really nothing in there yet we have an initial commit nothing in there yet. so what you can do now so I have flutter installed so if you want to install flutter um, it's fairly easy um, you have flutter uh, there are some installation right if you just go to the get started page you go to mac os um, you can see that there are multiple ways to do it but the main idea is that you actually have flutter uh, checked out in some folder and every time uh, you want an update you just do flutter upgrade and actually what it does it goes to git and uh, pulls the changes uh, and there are normal channels so if i type flutter channel i think that's what it is uh, you will see that uh, okay, well, that didn't really work. Um, maybe it will give me more info if I do doctor. So, but the idea is that um, you can you choose which flannel you, uh, channel you're on. So I, you can see that I'm on channel dev. Um, and I need to be on channel dev because that's the one that has Mac OS support. So even if you're not developing for Mac, um, it's really nice to not have to run an emulator all the time. Uh, so basically, uh, I can test my game like I just showed you with just a window, which doesn't make my fan spin. Uh, obviously, now OBS is making my fan spin, uh, but at least uh, I don't have to run an Android emulator on top of it. So that's a good thing. Okay, so now we have this. And now if you want to create a Flutter project, all we do is Flutter create. And um, I think, uh, can we do it this way? Okay, so that wasn't good. I wanted to see my config. Um, so you can see, oh, see, that's what I wanted to show. I have an able Mac, Mac desktop true, and I have an able web also true. So that is very important in order to, um, in order, when, when Flutter, when I run Flutter create now, it will actually create all these, um, all the things necessary uh, to be able to run this on, on all these, uh, uh, on all these platforms. So I can also, uh, you know, you basically you do Flutter enable Mac OS desktop, right? Like this. Uh, so you do uh, Flutter minus minus enable uh, Mac OS desktop, right? And so that's how you can uh, you can change that setting and you can disable it as well. So that's what I did. So now what you can do is I do Flutter create and I say dot, which means that I already have a folder. I want you to create it right here. So now you can see it did a bunch of th things, right? And um, and we have these. Uh, we have now a a main file. Okay, and so if I run would run that, uh, then we would get some results. Um, but what I want to actually do is uh, first work on the time lapse. So we're not even going to use Flutter yet. We're going to actually run this as a Dart command line application. Um, so um, what I'll do. So first of all, I will totally. Um, 
I will just open this with Wim uh, and remove everything in the start file and main file. Um, so we don't want any of this stuff. This is like the default thing that I think you can change what the default thing is, but um, right now we'll probably crash. Okay. Um, but we, we will not run this app yet. This is just for us to remind us that we are not there yet. But what we'll do, we'll open this in IDM. So I'm using IntelliJ. Uh, actually, IntelliJ for Flutter is free, um, which is nice. Uh, so you can do Flutter development without even the uh, full version. I have the full version because I'm also using IntelliJ for work for TypeScript. But um, you don't need uh, that, actually. So what we'll do, um, so we, as I said, I will steal, so to speak, uh, all my code from um, from uh, uh, the version that I already did, right? So what we'll do is, uh, I have this here on the left, you can see this, so basically here, this is a window I have, I have that here on my screen, um, in a way where I can still see the chat. And uh, we'll just be, some of this I might just copy over uh, because it's just, uh, you know, just like not very interesting to type this up. Um, but basically I had this in the level. So let's just do, uh, so first of all, we're not going to reuse any tests right now. So we'll remove that. Um, so as you can see, we have a web folder, a macOS folder, iOS folder, and Android folder. So that means all these platforms uh, will be attempted to be supported. <laughs> just put it that way. Let's also go into the, um, Let's also go here and remove a bunch of stuff. Um, so first of all, we want to uh, not type again what the description was. So we just post it in here. All right. Um, oh, and I can see a typo there. All right. So basically, uh, we'll just delete all this. This is really interesting, though, to know uh, if you're starting out how these things work. I already have done this a few times, so I don't need all this. Also, uh, if we are in doubt, we can always jump over uh, to our um, uh, to our already implemented project um, as a guidance. All right. So now uh, we'll go into the folder and I will create a folder or package, and we call it levels, like we did in the other one. All right. And, and so now we're going to go step by step. So first of all, um, we are already going to say what kind of tiles we'll have. So I need to open it. So let's make a new one here. And let's call it, uh, we call it tile map there. Uh, let's call it tile map here as well. So it's a dart file tile map. All right. Um, so I like to manage my Git by hand. So I don't need that. So basically now we have a the concept of a tile. So basically, this just says uh, what um, what kind of what kind of tile it is, right? What to put there. And and so now the thing is, uh, we create. Um, I said I'm going to type this up to explain it um, a little better, even though we did a quick uh, jump uh, walkthrough already. Uh, so we get, have a class tile map, and um, and it basically just has static methods. So it's not. A, uh, actually, it, could, it doesn't have to be a class. Um, I just use it to have a static method on it uh, to be able to import tile map and then call tile map dot build. Um, you know, it, it depends on, on what people prefer. Uh, in this case, I like to do it that way. And basically, um, first of all, so we call the tile map a lower. Um, but at the same time, the tile map itself. Uh, so I actually was wrong. It's not only it has a static method, but it also uh, will uh, contain the tiles and, and all these things, right? So uh, almost forget what I just said. Oh, the timer is actually an object. We, just the build method is static because it doesn't need to be uh, on the instance because it will actually produce uh, a tile map, right? So basically what we do, so we have a terrain, right? And, and as I said, we'll go step by step. So what I'll do is I'll copy in uh, the terrain here and our little method. So here we go. Uh, so what we're doing here is uh, we're defining a sample terrain. And just for fun, uh, let's also put a, so we have walls, but we all can also put a med kit, right? Um, so now I have a med kit, we have a diamond. And so now everything uh, is there that we currently support. I don't want to support these uh, 
rules anymore. And so we call build and then we print the timer, right? So for now, um, we just re uh, return, um, I don't know, goof, right? Because we're not, we're not really doing anything. We're just goofing around. But the thing is, it needs to be time map. So that didn't really work. Uh, and then as you can say, it prints a time map. So what we need to do, we need to, at the very minimum, we need to implement a constructor, uh, right? Which does nothing. Um, and let's just say we'll implement uh, the to string method. And for now, it will just say it's a time map, okay? And we'll, we'll fix that later. So uh, what we can do now, we just return a tile map. And again, I'm showing this uh, kind of like to also show the, uh, the way how you can iterate uh, on certain things. So now what I want to do, I actually don't want to, um, I basically want to create a new, well, actually, I think what we can actually do, we can just say run this. All right, so that worked. Um, so basically I just pressed uh, whatever I had mapped to uh, keyboard shortcut to run the file. So we'll keep this over here. Um, uh, should be fine. Um, you keep it over here. So basically you can see that it just did dart time map and now it's complaining. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but this is not a problem, uh, but it keeps complaining like that if you run it with a command line uh, dart. So if, if, you, if anyone knows what that is, uh, let me know. Now what we'll do, we'll save this um, and we have a configuration, so we just name it nice. Right. And we just say dart time map, okay. So now we have uh, something we can run over and over, right? Just run it and, okay, cool. So now, uh, now we actually need to do something here, right? So so we have the terrain and uh, first of all, we get, um, right, we get all the lines out there. So we get, um, get the lines. In this case, in, I used to have to do all lines uh, because we needed to cut off the, um, these things here, um, the the rulers that we don't have anymore. So I can just probably say terrain dot split, right? Okay. So you have the lines, um, and so what I want to actually do is I want to uh, I just want to go again go step by step. So I'm just going to print the lines and I run again, and so you can see that there's an error we have. Okay, fine. Uh, and actually, I'm going to pull up the analysis, wherever that went. There's a dot analysis. Here we go. Um, so what I'll do is I'll leave that down here. I think this was, um, or maybe I'll just move that to the, I th I'll leave it down here. Um, it doesn't have to be that big. So we keep, uh, you know, we're getting alerted whenever we have a problem. And then... I don't like the fact that it's not all the way over here. So I'll move this a little. Well, we figured out, I guess. Um, so make sure you make it smaller. So it's kind of more in the middle of the screen. All right, cool. So, um, so now let's do it again. And now we can see we got something here, right? Uh, and it looks weird because, yeah, the way it gets rendered, right? Um, so we can see we have all these lines here. Every time there's a comma, there's a new line. Okay, cool. So now um, we have the lines. And so basically now we're determining first how many rows do we have, right? Rows is how many lines, right? And then we'll do this little routine where we figure out what's the, uh, what's the uh, uh, number of columns, right? So we can say final calls and um, Right, we just set to zero, and obviously there are like functional programming style ways we could do this, but sometimes I like to be just really simple. So basically, we go for uh, we set it to zero at first, and then we go through each line, um, in lines, right, and then we say uh, okay, the calls is actually the maximum of the line dot length, and the calls that we have so far. So basically, so we have to import math here. So basically what that means is when we made this final, so we can't make a final. Um, final means you can't change it afterwards, right? It's like constant in JavaScript. Um, there's also a constant dart, uh, but that actually means it's known at compile time. So it's uh, slightly different. So um, so we got the calls 
And what that basically means, every time it goes through this line here, it says, okay, uh, what's the current calls? Let's just say there are five. And then the line length is six. So now the calls become six because the maximum is six, right? The next time it comes through, and let's say now the line length is four, well, we already have six, so it stays at six. And, and that way we know at the very end, we have the uh, longest um, line, basically, is the number of columns. Uh, now we can uh, calculate how many tiles do we need, like, right? Um, so basically, that's like the number of rows times number of columns, right? So basically, if you look at it this way here, we have, you know, we have the, this is a row, so we have one, two, three, whatever, um, 10, about 10 rows, right? And then, but the thing is, this one happens to stop here, but since the one below, right, is this long, we actually need to, to make it uniform, we need to go up to here, right? So that means that uh, our whole matrix will actually um, show those amounts, it will actually be from here, kind of like this, right? So, okay. All right, so now, uh, so we got n tiles. And so, which means now we can final crea finally create a list of our tiles. So the list of our tiles is basically a list of a tile. Uh, and we, we already know how many we have, right? So we have n tiles. So we can already pre-allocate uh, all the slots in that list. So basically, just to be clear, we are representing, and, and that's where uh, probably watching Handmade Hero uh, makes sense. So again, well, he went away. But this is uh, this is that he he actually explains it in very detail uh, how um, how basically the um, uh, you you represent a mat matrix that's two dimensional in a in a one dimensional list. But I'll explain it as we go, but not in that same detail. Um, so again, if you want more details, uh, then uh, watch watch this stuff. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the fill it already. So we're gonna fill from zero um, to n tiles. And we'll fill it with uh, tiles. Dot. So for now, we're assuming that basically our map has nothing in it, right? Even though that's not true. Um, and then we basically now we're going to go. And we're going to go first uh, through each row, and we're going to start to fill it. So we start with the zeroth row. Uh, we know how many rows we have, and then and again, like there are probably some magic. Uh, ways of doing this, um, I don't know what it is here, uh, four. Uh, some magic ways of doing this with a reduce or some other um, functional stuff, but I, I kind of like the simplicity of just like having a real loop. Um, all right, what's going on here? Oh, it's because I made final. You can't make it final if you're trying to change it later. So now uh, what we do, so now we have our current line will be the lines of the row, right? So now we have our line. So if you now actually, instead of printing out the, the all the lines, if we print out each line, right? Uh, it should actually look a little bit better. So now you can see we're actually printing out the, the same thing that we have here, right? Make sense? All right, cool. So now uh, what we can do is, uh, first of all, we, we assume for now uh, we haven't seen uh, Bounds. We haven't seen that yet, right? Bound start. We haven't seen that, nor do we have uh, have you seen the end, right? So we start in this condition, and so basically this will be the case for every a line, right? Every time we start a new line, like we might start it here, right? So we haven't seen the bound start. We don't know where that is. So first we have to find it, and then our state changes because now uh, for each empty here, each empty slot is out of bounds. But once we are here, each empty slot will be uh, a inbounds, which means we have to put a little um, stone there, right? Or a little tile, um, stone tile to make it look nice. Um, so what we'll do now is, this is like the, the tricky part, um, tile row equals, and so we get, go n rows minus row, right? Um, uh, and so basically our tile map has, um, zero zero at the left bottom corner right so basically what we're doing is we're basically reversing uh we're, we're basically creating this array differently right so basically let's just say um our row is zero right so which is basically this one that would be zero so and we said we have n rows well the tile row now becomes 10 minus zero so it becomes actually um 
depends on 10. So then that means that the zeroth row will end up here and the first and so on here. And so the 10th row will be up here. So this is how we already reversing uh, the way we create the time map in the first place. Um, and now we actually can go through the columns. Um, uh, call zero, uh, calls. Uh, and so as you can see, we're going for each row, we go through all the calls, even though uh, we might already be out of bounds, but then we'll just stay uh, with the out of bounds there and we'll see how, how that works. Um, so then we add, okay. So, um, all right. So now we basically, we, we're first getting the car at the line, at the column, right? So the line is basically, uh, so again, uh, if you think about this, the column is basically going left to right and the row top to bottom. So the column basically is our X, right? And the row is our Y. Um, so now we get the car. So for instance, you know, uh, at, let's just say, um, yeah, one, at one, two, three, four, right, five, nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or something like that. That's we would get that car. Otherwise, we get empty. So what we're going to see is like, um, first of all, we have to determine, uh, we have to update update this one. Have we seen the bounce start? So if you already have seen it, well, okay, we have seen it. We don't have to update it. But if we haven't, we're going to look at if the car is uh, the bounce start. Okay, and so now you can see I'm trying to use a uh, constant here that we didn't create it. So I'm going to steal it from over here. We're going to steal our constants from the thing we already implemented. Put this at the top. So you can see that uh, the bounce start is a parentheses like that, bounce end is like that, and empty is just empty. So, okay, so now we should be fine with that. Okay, right? So now we update C bounce start. As you can see, once it's true, it will stay true. Uh, while we're going through all the columns of that one row, right? Every time we start a new row, it will be set to false again. So in the same thing, we'll go for bounce end, right? Except that it's going to be the bounce end. Okay. All right. So uh, we have that now. And now basically we're, we are looking at um, things a little differently. So if you have seen the bounce start, So let's, oh, let's just, uh, so basically what we're going to say, we're going to, we're going to define a, a variable. So out of bounds, what does it mean? Right. Uh, that means we have not seen bounce start, right? Or we have seen bounce end, right? So that means basically that, well, while we're here, don't want to break one there. Over here, we are out of bounds, right? And now here we're in bounds, but now once we are here, and as I said, we kind of extended our matrix to include this to be uniform, right? But once we're basically there, um, then we are also out of bounds. So that's what that means. So then basically we're saying, um, if we are out of bounds and uh, the, uh, the car is empty, right? So if you basically, um, and it's basically the empty, right? So it means we have just a empty space there, right? Then uh, we'll say that uh, we'll keep declaring out of bounds. But the thing is that we don't need to do anything because we already set it to out of bounds, right? See that? We already did. So actually, this is like a non action here, right? Okay, so else. And we'll do something about this in a second. But else, um, we have to look at what's the. Um, so basically, now we're going to index into the tiles, and we're going to explain how that works. And then we convert uh, the, uh, we convert the tile from a car, and we copy this method because that's a very mundane method. <clears throat> we copy that here to the top, and I'll just walk real quickly through it, but it's very mundane. Basically, what we're doing is, okay, well, we need another one, copy the tile, then we have to still create. <clears throat> so this is basically just a map. We, we already looked at that map, so it makes sense to just copy it over. So <clears throat> card to tile is basically a map that has a string key and a tile value, right? And so uh, you can it's, it's self-explanatory pretty much. Um, it just maps <clears throat> different uh, cars to 
uh, to the the enum basically right so um and then basically here we say tau from car we just basically say tau from car and the only reason why this method actually exists is so we get early feedback if something is weird right so basically if if we uh, have a car in our map that that we don't know what that is so basically here it's not found then we get an immediate error uh, when you're trying to build a time map and not somewhere later in the game where it's going to be confusing to figure out. All right. So now we got that. Um, and so basically, so we're going to say top from car and we're going to pass our car. Okay. So now, but how, where do we assign it to, right? So how do we know which top we're on? So we have to, as I said, we <coughs> kind of, uh, mapping, uh, we are mapping our our two-dimensional thing into a um, into a uh, one-dimensional. So it's kind of like we're doing this, except that obviously uh, it's uniform. So there'll be uh, the spaces filled in, right, for wherever we uh, the row length is is less than um, than the maximum, right. So we're doing this. Um, we're representing our 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 time map basically like this. So, um, so what does it mean? So basically, in order, first of all, let's just say we want to go to the second, uh, to here, right? Let's just say we want to go to this character right here, this one, the second line. So first of all, we have to go, okay, um, we have to, what, the row, right? So that's the first row. So you have to go the tile row, tile row, times however many columns are in each row, right? So, um, so n calls. Right, so so let's just say we have two rows to skip. So we want to actually go to this guy here, right? So we go um, one times n columns. So we go here, right? So if you see like one dimensional, so then we basically do this again, n columns. So like we have twice out n columns, and now basically we are here, right? So we ended up right where we wanted to be um, in our one dimensional representation of the two dimensional thing, right? So, but, and then obviously, uh, so that's for the first one, which is at column zero, but then if we want to go anywhere in here, like we just have to add the, the current column, right? Okay. So now I might ask, um, okay, so first of all, so that's really easy. And what we'll do is we actually flip this, right? And then we don't need the else anymore. So basically if we are not out of bounds, Or the car is not empty, then get car from uh, right. Basically, what we're saying is like, well, that's actually very confusing. Let's let's undo this. Uh, this is very hard to understand. So, um, so here we're doing is like, if we're out of bounds, and our car is empty, then don't do anything. The thing is though that if we're out of bounds, we're out of bounds, right? So it shouldn't matter if the car is empty, right? Which is out of bounds. Don't do anything there. Keep it out of bounds. And then obviously here, um, and else we want to tell from car. So even if, if, if it's empty in that case, right? Uh, we get tall empty. So that's kind of what we want. Uh, so actually we can simplify it and now we can switch that. And now it's going to be a lot easier to understand. So if you're not out of bounds, um, then we basically assign that. And I don't like negations that much. So what we're we actually going to do is we're going to say uh, inbounds. We're going to rename this inbounds. And okay. And then we basically say we have seen bounds start and we have not seen bounds end yet, right? So we are in, right? And now. So the thing is though that if we have seen bounds end, we can actually break because we're done. So, uh, but the thing is we still need to put, well, here's a, here's a funny thing. So if we have seen, so we're in bounds, fine, right? Um, but actually we need to update this after because, so basically we're seeing bound end, right? And then basically we need to put the bounce end uh, tile there, right? So we um, are we currently still in bounce? Yes. If we're in bounce, 
then get the tau from car. So if the car happens to be uh, bounds end, we'll put it tau boundary. Okay, fine. So we did that. And then actually we can see um, that, um, that we've seen it. And the thing is we only get here once. So the cool thing is that we actually don't need this because what we're actually going to do is we're going to break. We're going to simplify this. So if you're at a bound end, we're done because we already filled everything with out of bounds. We don't need to keep going and fill the remaining. So basically, if you end up here, right, we're done. We don't have to keep filling this with out of bounds things because we already have filled it with out of bounds things. So, okay, now, um, so that also means that we don't have to, we don't need this variable at all. All right. And then basically this one becomes almost needless. So that means we can actually remove that and say, if you have seen the bounce start, okay, right? If you have seen it, now add it, right? And so while once we have seen it once, it will stay true because we always do this here. And, and then when we're done, uh, we're breaking anyway. So we, we know once we've seen it, there's no way that we, that we keep going because once we see the end, we, we're, we're done. So that's, that's taken off. And so now we basically are done. Uh, so what we do, we'll store certain things in our tau map. And I'm just going to copy that over because, and, and walk through this real quick. But basically we want to, um, right. And I marked here that this is actually corresponds to A. So we want to see how many columns we have, how many rows we have, and we want to see, um, the tiles that we have, right? So that means we just return a tile map with our tiles. Uh, what is it up there? Rows first and then columns. Okay, cool. So we return the tile map and then uh, we'll change it to string interpretation. And I will just copy that because uh, it's a little tricky to, to get this to be pretty. Um, so basically what we'll do is so we have the task string, and so the task string, that's that's the tricky one. Uh, and I will not uh, go through this hand by hand. Uh, according to this, I will just walk through this real quick. But mainly the idea is that all we're doing here is, um, well, first of all, we're making sure that our tiles have the correct length. Um, just basically warn us. And then basically here we're saying n rows minus one. We don't have to do that anymore. That used to be when uh, we, uh, no, actually, this is still correct. So, uh, because we have to, right, we have to start basically, at, they say we have 10 rows, um, they are zero base, so we need to go start from nine, okay. And then we basically go through all our columns, and we basically, all we're doing is we're, um, we're mapping um, the, the, um, the tile to, back to a car. So, we're saying, like, if the tile's out of bounds, we put X, um, if the time is empty, we put this. Otherwise, you put the index of the enum, right? And the index is basically what I put here. So that, I mean, that this only, like, instead of putting nothing for out of bounds, we put an X. And instead of putting a zero for empty, we put a uh, space so we can easier parse the, the map. Okay, so now, actually, we should already get a result. Okay, so something is wrong here. So we got... Okay, let's see. Oh, we made a mistake here. Um, and you know, actually, it's correct in calls. We may have to do this minus one still. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. So let's, uh, let's work the code again here. Okay, so we set the row smaller than in rows. Basically getting it out of out of bounds here. Um, 
So what it says here, I just empty. It doesn't tell me what index I actually use. So scene bound start. Okay, so that's fine. Um, Turbo times n calls. Should actually be correct. If anyone has an idea, let me know. Because um, we created this as n tiles, right? So basically, we're getting. Or, or the problem could also be that we're accessing. Something, uh, but, but that shouldn't happen because we're breaking if we see bounce end, unless we have something in here that doesn't have a bounce end. Well, what could be is that let's do that because I think it might just be the fact that we have empty lines in here, still the same. So, okay, so what we'll do is um, we'll try to log first and then we'll try to uh, step through this. So, um, we'll go. We print the line and to make sure we don't have any empty lines so we'll do it like this all right so so that's the first line okay and it's already complaining at the very first line about this um okay so let's think about this so the row so I think we'll just step through this then because if it's already happened to the first line, so, um, all right. So let's go through that. Let's look at our variables. So you have n rows, you have 12 rows, 20, 26 columns, and this many tiles. All right, and so now these are the lines. Okay, fine. And so now let's step through this. Let's see. So then the the tile row becomes twelve, and that's a problem, right? Because we have twelve, uh, and so it actually needs to be minus one. Okay. So let's do that and let's see, um, right? Because. If you have n rows, there's zero index. So if I have 12 rows, we need to start uh, with with 11, right? So again, like keep in mind that we are first processing this one here up here, right? So this would needs to be at index 11 because it's the 12th row. Um, so let's uh, let's do this again now. Um, okay, so now we get tile row. Uh, tile row is 11. Okay, cool. So now. Um, the car is that. So now we should scene bound start is true. And so we have scene bound start. And then we say tile row times n calls. So n calls are n calls are 26. And plus call plus so basically we're getting is tile uh, we're getting um tile was eleven times uh n calls twenty-six, right? So we're getting 286. So that should still be in bounds here, right? So we should actually be fine here. And so we are fine. Okay, cool. So maybe actually now it's fixed. We're still getting it. Okay. So what we'll do is um So what we'll do is we'll, we'll calculate the index. Right? And then um, if index is greater, so first of all, we're going to put an assert there. But for now, um, we want to actually, it's greater than our, our, um, our tiles dot length. Or size, I think. The length. 
I don't know why I decided to put this together linked. Um, so then we basically printed a bug message here. So we're going to say, uh, what's the line? And we're going to say, uh, what's the tile row? And we're going to say, what's the the call, right? And we're also going to say, what's the car, right? Just to have an idea of what we're actually looking at here. OK, so and then else, we assign it. So actually, now we shouldn't bomb anymore. What is it complaining about now? Uh, okay. Uh, so okay, so let's, let's just uh, keep running this. Okay, so now we actually have an error. Okay, so it's actually here. Hmm. So we're actually accessing. So okay, so we need to break also when we reach the end. But the thing is, what's confusing is. We should have already broken out of here, right? So when we see a bounce end, we should have already broken out. So I'm not sure where. So let's just run this again, actually. And then let's look at our variables. Which line are we actually looking at? Line is empty. Ah, OK. So the line is empty, that's the problem. What is our row is 11. Uh, so that should be, no, our tile row is zero. That's the zeros line. So as I said, I, I think that maybe So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to filter out, I'm going to make sure that we filter out all empty lines. So when we basically create the lines here, right, we're going to uh, filter uh, or where. Um, so we're going to have uh, the string is not empty. OK. So now actually it might work already. Okay, we're still getting something. Okay, now we're getting. Oh, and so, okay, so yeah, that's the fun part. Every time we do anything like that, it will create it, uh, convert it to an iterable. Okay, so now we have it, right? So basically, we, we, we're, we're having some um, some empty empty lines in there. And, and those were causing problems because the empty line never, never had a bounce end. And so we were trying to index into it, like assuming that it had the length of the row and so on. So um, small little problem. Uh, but basically now we have, so now we're basically getting this where it prints out. So let's just take, um, so the six is a med kit, then we got the player here, we got the diamond, we got our walls here and, uh, and, and the boundaries, right? Um, the boundaries actually, so the boundaries actually also denote um, how far the, the time map goes all like I mean so these are these are added by the to string method by the way so these are not part of the actual time map um, here we can see that right we're adding this in um, and so these are the, the x's are out of bounds that's perfect so we got uh, so the twos are basically uh, so difference here is a boundary so it's basically just a wall and we just denote it as a boundary um, uh, because we want to make sure that the player doesn't somehow end up over here or over here, right? So um, so basically we can say if he's here and there's any in the boundaries to the right of it, right? Then that's wrong. Or if it's here and the boundaries to the left of it, that's wrong. So that's that's mainly if we run into any issues where the player might have jumped over a wall for some whatever reason. Uh, we can easily just put him back. Okay, so that... Um, that concludes the, the time map. So we got the time map. And I'm going to take about a 10 minute break. I think, but uh, before, actually, I'm going to, so I'm going to continue on the top of the hour. 
Um, but before that, we'll just go real quick through uh, what you're trying to do next. So, so now we got the, so first of all, we're gonna uh, check this in, right? Um, so we got some, um, got some code. Um, and so we actually what we're gonna do, we're gonna just amid, uh, amend to the initial commit because um, we don't want the, um, so basically um, app, we got the initial app um, including tile map generation. Okay, so that's our first commit. All right, so so now that's here. I'm just gonna paste it into the chat. We should have that all here now. So if you want to kind of look at the code, clone the code, um, you can. All right. So. Um, so what are we going to next, right? Um, well, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at how the, um, well, first of all, what we're going to do, the very first thing we're going to do actually is we are going to do, uh, we're not going to do even any game um, loop yet at all. All we're going to do is uh, we're going to, and I'm looking over here to, because basically I have something similar already so i have so by the way if you want to kind of look at you know what i'm working off um you can go to ufo 2d um well 2d without the e um post it in here and so there's an experiments canvas playground here and so basically that's where i just uh didn't even want to use the game i just wanted to draw to the canvas and so here you can see that I was experimenting with how to do a text sprite and so on. And um, and basically um, you can see that we're gonna create an app similar to this. Uh, we are not going to even have a timer yet. All we're going to do, we're gonna have a canvas painter and, and then we're basically just going to uh, draw the time map. Right? There's no movement, there's not gonna be any players yet. We're going to talk about all these things uh, have to do with the canvas and so on. And that's what we're going to do next. Uh, and so I'm going to take a short break. And, but just like five minutes um, on top of the hour, I'm back. Um, but I, I'm going to stop the stream because I want to split those up into separate videos that I can also then possibly post on uh, YouTube uh, for others to watch them uh, later. So, um, so don't go away. Uh, stick around. Um, going to be right back. 